So before we start the video today, guys, I just wanted to let you know that in one week from now, the Strive Smart merch store is going to be live. And guys, I'm so excited for this. This is literally months in the making of me testing products, making designs, customizing the logo, all of that good stuff. So this is a surreal moment that the store is finally going to launch. There's going to be tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, accessories. The list goes on on November 4th and one week from today, next Monday and I actually have a link down below in the description box and a pinned comment down below where if you click that link You'll be able to sign up for the newsletter and I promise no spamming whatsoever All you'll get is an email when the store is live when there are promotions on the store and when there are new products So the link is down below next Monday November 4th. You guys are awesome I appreciate you guys so much for supporting me over the past couple of months However long you've been supporting me. You are awesome and for supporting the brand. It means a lot to me so let's get right into the video guys hope you guys enjoy it what is going on everybody it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq we're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I did today in the markets as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now heading into the month of November in 2019 and as you guys read in the title there's this one stock in particular that I'm watching right now that I think is arguably the hottest stock in the stock market and I want to break it down for you guys and give you guys my opinion on that stock here in a couple of minutes so stay tuned for that so if you enjoy the video if you find value in the video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart Facebook group those are linked down below and are 100% free of charge so guys let's get into it with the S&P 500 here which ended up hitting an all-time high today at $3,044.08. Closed the day up $16.87, up 0.56%. So we finally, guys, broke out of that 3027 level of resistance here after we got that nice bullish move of the break above the ascending triangle. Actually, the break out of the ascending triangle, right? And if we go to the one day, one minute, the funny thing thing is we gapped up aggressively today right from the close on Friday which was at around 3022 but you guys can see and I'm sure you already know this if you were following the market today we were kind of flat for the rest of the day ever since we hit that all-time high as we gapped up which is pretty interesting in my opinion and um, at this point guys you know depending on what earnings are going to do we had Google actually report just now and they're actually tanking so I don't know how that's going to affect the market but depending Depending on how, you know, these large companies report, that could definitely fluctuate the markets either up or down. So here in the short term, resistance levels on the SPX, you know, I'm not really seeing any because we're at all time highs, right? So all we can look at are support levels, which at this point, the support that I'm looking at is going to be the previous all time high at 3027. So hey, maybe we pull down and test this level. And if we hold that level, we can continue the uptrend and potentially push to another all-time high, right? So right now at this point, guys, that's what I'm watching, right? Are we going to pull down? Are we going to continue to go up? And again, that's contingent in my opinion, you know, based on what these earnings are going to do. You know, Apple's on Wednesday, which I think is going to heavily fluctuate this market. We could potentially be getting a rate cut here. We had some optimism around the trade war. You know, there's a bunch of moving variables right now that can move this market. But overall, looking at this one day, or rather the one hour, the 20 20 day one hour chart, we can see the S&P is in a clear uptrend moving above these moving averages today. Again, with that all time high, we gapped up to a higher high, really continuing this uptrend. So right now, the S&P is looking really good. The Dow Jones Industrial Average did not hit an all time high today, but still it was up half a percent, nearly up 132 points here and 66 cents, right? And we can see we're slowly starting to break the ascending triangle here. We're slowly starting to hold 27K as a support and make our way up to that all-time high, which is at around 27400 bucks. So this is looking pretty bullish, in my opinion, again, because we broke the resistance here. This is looking you know, like a breakout of the uh, wedge ascending triangle that I'm seeing here. And this is pointing to me that, hey, we may be pushing up here to fill that gap. And if we go to that one-hour chart, you guys can see 
see exactly what I mean. We popped up today to about 27,160. We pulled down. We held 27K, confirmed it as a support at a higher low, which is very, very attractive. Then we ended up closing the day on a nice little upswing. So watch for the Dow to fill that gap. If we go to that one day, one minute, we can see even closer, you know, how strong of a support 27-ish thousand bucks is on the Dow Jones. So those are just a couple of levels worth watching in my personal opinion. So going over here to the NASDAQ, we see a nice little dump here after hours because Google is, you know, again, we saw Google is dumping right now after hours. They reported earnings. I didn't get to look at their earnings because it's 426 right now and I'm clearly recording a video, which I'm going to hop into the earnings after I report or record and upload this video, right? But the NQ in general, guys, up 58 bucks right now, up 0.73%. So it had the strongest performance out of the three major indexes that we track on this channel being the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P. So overall, the futures are looking good here. We gapped up above 80.50, which was the previous all-time high. We actually broke that all-time high yesterday, Sunday, in terms of the futures market. At around 7 p.m. Eastern Standards is where I do think um, we broke that. So this is in a similar scenario as the S&P. You know, there's not really a resistance that I'm looking at because, again, we're at all-time high. So I'm looking to see if we pull down here and hold the previous all-time highs as a new support. You know, that's what we have to look at here. And again, you know, let's say Google recovers, that might push the NASDAQ up. If Apple blows earnings out of the water, who knows what they're going to do, right? A lot of people don't think that, you know, I don't know if they're going to blow um, the earnings out of the water, but let's say they somehow have good earnings, you know, that could continue to push up the NQ, and of course, vice versa, if Apple completely misses earnings, you know, this could be pulling down, finding support at 80.30, 80.50, maybe even lower here at about 79.80, maybe those, um, you know, couple levels there. So, overall, guys, the markets are doing well, and this is mostly due, again, to this trade war news that we got today that I'm about to read you guys, um, you know, on my phone here very quickly. So, President Donald Trump said on Monday he expected to sign a significant part of the trade deal with China ahead of schedule, but did not elaborate on the timing. So we don't know when that's going to happen, but the fact that he said that pumped optimism to the market. And what does the market love, guys? The market loves when there's good news surrounding the trade war, because that is, in my opinion, the heaviest weighing variable right now on the market, right? The market hates uncertainty, and whenever there's uncertainty, regarding the trade war. What happens to the market, guys? You all know this. The market tanks, right? The market tanks and vice versa, right? When there's optimism surrounding the trade war, when uncertainty starts to settle a bit, maybe even decline, that's when the market really launches off. And that's what we've been seeing here over the past couple of days. It's not like the earnings season has been ridiculous, right? It's not like these earnings have been pushing these markets. I think it's really due, you know, to this trade war and to this potential 25 basis point, you know, rate cut that we might be getting here over the next couple of days. So overall, that's what the markets are looking like. I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below in the comment section. Let me know about that. Now let's get into what I personally did today, and I ended up liquidating my position in Visa, guys. And this is one that I held from last week. If you guys remember, I'll pull up the five-day, five-minute chart so you guys can um, see what I did here. But last week, excuse me, um, Visa, they reported earnings, right? I think I got in on this day, um, let me see, um, 174.70, I think I got in, yeah, it was this day, I ended up selling half of my position at the market close, roughly, like I mentioned in last week's video, then I ended up holding the latter half of the position through the weekend, and my goal was to sell it at 180 bucks, I actually had a limit order at 180 bucks, and look at that, guys, we got to 180.18 today, so that means my order filled, and I really profited on, you know, Visa from the, you know, the, the half position that I held from last week. So that is the first trade I made today. And on a percentage basis, guys, um, you know, the first trade I made was from 174.70 up to about, I really forget where I sold it, to be honest, but it was about like a 1.2% profit, I believe. So the rest of those shares sold at about 180. That's around a 3% profit on the remaining shares. So I'm very, very happy with how that ended 
ended up going. The second trade I ended up making today was in you guys. And you guys, guys, we called it out yesterday to a T. If you weren't in from Friday, you probably didn't profit on this initial run up, but the pull down allows you to get in if you were able to take advantage of it to profit on this second rally that we saw from the middle of the day to the close of the day, right? So let's say you somehow got in at 13 bucks on Friday, you would have made a sweet 13% profit holding it over the weekend, which is incredible, right? I don't think anybody would be complaining about a 13% profit. I for sure would not be complaining about that, right? That is amazing, right? I didn't make 13% though. If you did, congrats to you. But I ended up getting in on this pull down as we held a higher low from the pre-market low at about 1370 at about 13.9, right? We also held that 180s SMA here on the five day, five minute chart as a support. And if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see how, you know, this is really, uh, really just an uptrend in my eyes based on this one day, one minute. We didn't pop to that higher high quite yet, but I think there's potential that we do do something like this in tomorrow's session, right? And if you guys take a look at natural gas, these are the November futures here. You can see, you know, they've been running up like crazy over the past day right 1 30 p.m this was today guys um literally about three hours ago this found that little low here at about 240 we actually held that resistance as a new support and we pretty much filled the gap up to you know we filled the the, the the channel up to about 250 which is the next resistance which is pretty crazy in my eyes right this is looking extremely bullish like I said in yesterday's video we need to see the break above 238 we got that right we need to see the break above the 180 SMA we got that and we need to see the break above 240 we got that right so that's three confirming factors here on natural gas. You know, at this point, we are overbought, so maybe we pull down again, retest 240, but I'm really not sure if we do that because, again, we already kind of did do that. We pulled down, you know, earlier today, we tested it and popped. So at this point, you know, it's at a point in time where, hey, we may actually run above 250 tomorrow and hold that level now and then go from there, right? Let's say we run up drastically. This is best case scenario, by the way, guys let's say we run up to 255 tomorrow which ah, that's kind of a stretch but hey anything can happen you know from there we may see a bit of a, uh, a retracement down to about 248 250 and then hold that before maybe going back up and testing 255 again and maybe going even higher so those are just a couple of levels you know, that I'm kind of watching here. And back to you guys, because I didn't even tell you guys what I did in terms of my trade. You know, again, I got in when natural gas was kind of bottoming at 240 and then starting to fill that gap up to 250. And you guys can see at that point in time, you know, you guys was breaking above the 50 SMA, the 180 SMA. We actually pulled down here. And this is actually where I got in, where we started to confirm the resistance levels, old resistance levels being the moving averages as a new support, right? That was very confirming in my in my eyes, um, you know, in my opinion. And it was a higher low here. I ended up entering at about 1435. Had a limit order at the previous resistance at 14.6, just to be safe, right? And uh, really, that's all I did at this at that point, right? Very quick in and out trade. Again, had my limit order made about a 1.5 to about a 1.6 percent profit on you guys today. So overall, that's what I ended up doing, guys. Feel free to let me know down below in the comments what the you do today? What stocks are really you involved with? Are you swing trading, day trading? Feel free to let me know down below. So what is that hottest stock in the stock market, guys? You could probably guess it. It's Roku, guys. This stock is just insane. This stock is just insane. You know, this stock, honestly, Shopify too, but I haven't really been watching Shopify recently. This one went from 160 to 409. Now it's kind of in a bit of a, a declining phase, but Roku already saw the declining phase and it's rebounding so aggressively, which is unbelievable in my opinion, right? We went all the way from 45 bucks up to 176 bucks, which I don't even know off the top of my head. What is that in terms of a percentage increase? That's got to be like, um, like three. 
300, 350%, 400% gain there, which is just bonkers, right? That's just unbelievable. You know, if you were to buy here and sell here, that's like, that's got to be one of your best trades ever, you know, honestly, especially if you were to play uh, call options. But anyway, from 176, we sold off all the way to 100 bucks, lost almost half of the value, and we found a strong support at that level at about 100 bucks. And from there, we set levels here, right? I've been covering this stock for the past couple of months. I didn't trade it, which I regret, but hindsight is 2020. But I was covering this, talking about levels like 100 bucks, 107, 112. And you guys can see we've been breaking those levels like nothing, right? Riding these moving averages as support levels, pushing up to higher highs. If we zoom in a bit here, we're getting a bullish cross which is the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. We broke above the 140 level of resistance. This is looking incredible, right? So at this point, you know, our size overbought. Earnings are coming up here on the 6th of November, putting this in a tricky spot in my personal opinion. Sure, we may pull down a bit at this point, hold 140, 141 as a support, but that's not going to be a screaming entry point in my opinion. For me, I need to see Roku maybe even get down to 138. 138 is this old resistance right here from a couple of days ago. You know, if we pull down and hold that, this could be a dip buy. Even better, in my opinion, would be if we were to pull down maybe even get to like 130 to 132 bucks, retest this 50 SMA, which has proven to be a support over the past couple of days. And that could be an entry, 132 bucks here, you know, but again, earnings are coming up on the 6th and that could heavily, guys, heavily, heavily, heavily fluctuate this stock. Look, past earnings report, I know you guys remember this. I forget what they reported, but that doesn't really matter. All you have to know is the stock went ballistic from 99 bucks up to 140 in the matter of a couple of days after their earnings. And this can really happen again if they report solid earnings. I wouldn't be surprised if this were to go from 132 back up to the 150s, 160s, guys. That would really not surprise me. But me personally, I'm looking to see for this pullback. If we get it, maybe we could get an in and out trade before earnings because me personally, I don't like holding very volatile stocks like Roku through earnings earnings. That's just not my forte. I don't like doing that. You can go ahead and do that if you find value in it, if you do your own due diligence and you feel comfortable doing that. But for me, either I'm going to hop in and out before earnings, make a nice little profit, or I'm going to wait until after earnings and make my decision there. But overall, that is my thoughts on Roku. Crazy, crazy stock. Hottest stock in the stock market in my personal opinion. And I know a lot of you guys would agree with that because honestly, I run a Discord group chat. Roku's one of the stocks that's talked about the most, right? So that's my thought on Roku. I'm waiting for that pullback. Some other stocks that I'm watching right now, guys, let me pull up my phone to get this notes, uh, these, these, these notes very quickly to show you all. Da, 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 da. Okay, Facebook stock, guys. This is one that they are reporting earnings here in tomorrow, I believe, or on the 30th. Yep, that's on Wednesday. So Facebook, we talked about this in yesterday's video. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but I'm looking to see if we eventually break above 192. I've been preaching about this for the past couple of months. You can see we've been stuck in this horizontal channel. We've been rejected at 192 multiple times. We've held 177 multiple times. So I'm looking to see, do we break out if we get positive earnings and something happens like the previous earnings report where the stock ran up 20 points after hours, you know, that could be, you know, the momentum we need to the upside to then get into a trade maybe around 191, 192, 195. Hopefully, excuse me, the stock doesn't move too much after earnings to where we miss the move completely. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So Facebook, 192 to about 205, that could be a move of about 6% up to 215, which is that all-time high. I think that's about a 9% move. So Facebook looking very, very good here. Abby 
ABBV. This is one that's beautiful right now, guys. You missed the entry probably, in my opinion, if you didn't get in already at this point. I'm not in. I missed the entry as well, but I still think it's worth watching here, you know, heading into the earnings report, which is on the 1st of November. So this is textbook. You know, this would have been a great trade to get into today. I didn't pull the trigger. Again, I already made money on Visa and you guys. Um, you know, I didn't pull the trigger, but I'm watching it heading into these next couple of days because take a look, guys. We pulled down, saw the nice retracement, held the old resistance as a new support, held that 50 SMA as a support as well. Now we're filling the gap up to 78, 79 bucks, which if we break that, you know, we may be filling the gap up to 8150, which is the next channel that I'm seeing, which offers around a 3% profit on Abvi. So I'm watching that one very, very closely. Google, you guys saw it tanked here after hours. If we go to the one day, one minute, we tanked. Now we're recovering. This could be a, you know, volatile earnings play tomorrow. You know, if you're into playing and day trading these large cap stocks, you know, this one's definitely going to be moving heavily tomorrow, you know, just like Amazon did after they reported their earnings. So another one I'm watching, which is honestly one that everyone should be watching at this point. That is Apple. They're reporting their earnings on Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be a crazy day, guys. We have earnings from Apple and from Facebook, arguably the two biggest companies here, um, you know, in the stock market, right? So overall, Apple, would I buy it here? There's no way and, and you know, there's no way I would buy it here. There's absolutely no way. It's too overbought. We're at all-time highs. At this point, I'm looking to see, hey, maybe do we pull back to the 50 SMA? Do we see a massive correction down? down to about 225, which would put us on that 180 SMA and on that old resistance as a new support. You know, that would ideally, in my opinion, be the best entry at this point, 225. And there's a ways to go, right? The only way we get there, I think, is if they completely blow it on earnings and the stock tanks after hours, which a lot of people do think that is going to happen, right? There's some people in my group, you know, the Strive Smart Discord chat that are talking about put options on Apple, right? So that, and, and some people people's eyes that's going to happen right am i saying it's going to happen you know, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. 10% to the downside, that's pretty big. But hey, if that does happen, again, that might open up a nice entry point if it does find support right here. So Apple, definitely worth watching here. Procter & Gamble, I've been getting questions about this one, so I figured why not cover it in this video. This is one that I swing traded. Um, I, it was like last week. You know, I did pretty well on Procter & Gamble here. But since then, it's been declining. Now we're starting to see a bullish move after hours. I'm not sure what the catalyst is for that because that is quite a big move here after hours, up about a dollar and some change. But anyway, Procter & Gamble at this point could go either two ways. Maybe we sell off and retest 121. That could be a nice dip buy here. But now with this after hours move, we can see, you know, that's actually breaking us above these moving average resistances and it's looking a bit bullish now. So that's changing my perspective a bit on Procter & Gamble. And what it does in the pre-market session is really going to influence my decision on what I want to do with it. But overall, you know, I think once it finds itself, once it wiggles out a bit here over the next couple of weeks, I do think it's eventually going to push to to an all-time high here and into the 130s. That's just my honest opinion, right? After, you know, the positive earnings, the last quarter, they did quite well afterwards once it wiggled out a bit. You know, they reported good earnings as well, in, in, you know, last week, which I think will push the stock up here. So overall, I'm looking for an entry as a swing, but I just don't want to pull the trigger until it wiggles out again, whether that's at 122, 123, 124, or even 125, right? Those are some levels that I'm looking at for Procter & Gamble. Another stock, guys, before I wrap up this video, is going to be AT&T, right? We got earnings on AT&T. You know, they beat on earnings according to this right here. You know, they beat by a couple of cents or really, uh, you know, not 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 even cents, less than a couple of cents. But anyway, they beat there. So from 38 bucks, we broke that resistance. Now we're looking to fill the gap up to 39.40, 39.50, right? That could be a potential move, you know, on T. And if we break that, we may be filling the gap up to 40 bucks, 
um, $41, $40.80. Those are some levels that I'm watching. So overall, guys, that is the video today. Those are some stocks that I'm watching, my thoughts on the market, you know, some, you know, trades that I took today. Let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? So if you guys enjoy the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me, and don't forget to join that newsletter down below if you do want to be notified when the Strive Smart merch store is live. Again, it's going live on the 4th of November, and I promise you guys, no spamming if you do sign up for that newsletter, just simply promotions, notifications when there are new products, and when the store goes live. So I appreciate all you guys supporting me. It means the world to me. You guys are absolutely awesome. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.